you, I'm Shayla, and welcome back to another day in my life in New York City. I have my celery juice because I learned my lesson. If you watched my last vlog, you know I didn't keep up with my celery juice towards the end of December, and then my skin started to kind of break out, which is not a vibe. So back on my celery juice, back on all my wellness things for 2023. We'll get into that in a little bit. I'm gonna do my little ginger shot. Lipospheric C. I already did some ginger tea. I have not had any caffeine yet today, which is another thing we'll talk about in a moment. <laughs> and we are officially back. Happy New Year. I, where do I even begin? When's the last time I vlogged? I guess it's only been three days since I vlogged. <laughs> Feels like a lot longer. The last time I left you was in, I just think I just got home from the Catskills with my mom. That was the last vlog, but the first vlog of the new year. I feel like there's a couple things that I wanted to like debrief with you on Christmas, Vlogmas, my mom leaving, the new year and all that stuff. So let's see, the Catskills was so fun, so relaxing. I, looking back now, realize that I didn't realize at the time how exhausted I was from December. Vlogmas was so much fun but I don't think that you guys understand how much work it is. <laughs> I don't think I understood how much work it was gonna be. I know how much time and energy I put into each vlog that I put out, which is a lot more than I think people realize. And then doing that daily was exhausting. And it's crazy because when I was in it, I was obviously getting tired towards the end, but I couldn't really conceptualize how much energy I was giving until A, when my mom got here, she was like, I thought you were gonna have more time to relax and unwind while I was here. I had no idea that you were getting up at five o'clock in the morning, starting working on Vlogmas and working on it until 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, yeah, I guess I didn't realize either because I've just been here by myself, <laughs> just like doing it, you know? So anyway, the Catskills was so relaxing and restful and and it wasn't until I got there that I realized how tired I was because there was one day, like you saw, that I literally slept the entire day. I was so tired. And since getting back, oh, well, I, but I guess let's rewind. Christmas was so nice. Side note, Bali is really good at opening up Christmas gifts. She had so much fun. We let her open up all of our presents. It was so freaking cute. I got a little diamond ring, as you saw when I was at Catbird with my mom. It's this little one on my pinky. We went in on it together for me, which is so fun. And then my mom also got me another gift portable hand warmers which i haven't gotten a chance to answer all of your comments yet that's something that i want to do today throughout uh vlogmas i just really fell off answering youtube comments but i saw somebody comment you need portable hand warmers and i was like girl i got them they're the best they're amazing i will link them below that was such a great thoughtful gift from my mom and truly much needed because the temperature has definitely dropped here in new york city it's chilly it's officially winter so christmas was great catskills was great super relaxing got home was so tired still the last time i vlogged was wednesday the 28th and then my mom left the next morning which was really really hard and really sad for obvious reasons i had so much fun with her here I've honestly never been good with goodbyes. I know that it's see you later. It's not goodbye forever. Changes and goodbyes are really difficult for me. I attribute that to growing up with divorced parents, having to go from my mom's house to my dad's house, to my mom's house, to my dad's house. It was always very hard for me to leave one house and go to the other. And I think that that is just something that's really stuck with me. It's hard for me to kind of transition from place to place. <laughs> I know I'm an adult now and I should get, get over that. And I definitely, I'm much better about it now, but it's still just hard. I'm like, no, I don't want you to leave, <laughs> you know? And of course, because I had a, such a nice time with her and it was so nice having her here, but we've already discussed the next trip and I know that I will see her soon and I already feel so much better after just a couple of days of getting back into my routine, but I just got so used to having her here and it was really hard to see her go. We also just had the best Christmas like the best. It was our actual New York City Hallmark Christmas. I'm so glad I got to share it with you guys too. It was just everything that I hoped it would be. So that was a tough day seeing my mom go. And I think I just was so tired that day. I ended up letting that kind of be a Sunday reset for me. I did all my laundry. I washed my sheets. I did a big grocery shop. I got fresh flowers. I got my nails done, said goodbye to the Christmas tree, said goodbye to the Christmas decorations, and just like really kind of got my space back in order. In the last Last couple of days has just been me trying to catch up on emails, which I'm still not caught up on, and just trying to get settled again after Vlogmas. I let a lot of things slip during Vlogmas, like my workouts towards the end, my wellness habits, a routine, emails, comments. 
you know, I just was so focused on Vlogmas and I'm really proud of that, but I definitely have felt like the last couple of days and I'm sure the next couple of days too are just a time for me to reflect and get settled and like take a beat because I didn't really get a chance to do that during the month of December because I was really focused on completing Vlogmas, which I'm really proud of. We kind of just debriefed on that already. It was a lot of work, but I feel very proud of myself and it was something that I wanted to do the last couple of years Years, but just felt really intimidated by and I'm really proud that I just went ahead and did it and went for it I hope you guys enjoyed it and I don't know if I'll do it again Maybe or I might do some variation of it, it was really hard for me to manage everything that I have going on and be successful at vlogmas So I definitely didn't have a great balance, but that's okay. I did the thing. It's done. I feel good about it I feel proud and now we are in a fresh brand new year with fresh energy all of the possibilities yesterday was new year's eve i had offers to do a couple of things with some friends that i would have loved to spend time with but what i really needed to do was rest really really tired it was super rainy yesterday and i honestly don't know whether i had a stomach bug or if i've just had anxiety the last couple of days, but my stomach was bothering me. Woke up today feeling so much better, thank goodness. But I mentioned I haven't had caffeine yet today and that's because I'm kind of leaning towards, it's a mixture of a stomach bug and anxiety and thought I kind of want to start to be a little more mindful about the amount of caffeine I'm having and how early I'm having caffeine because feeling nauseous 24 seven is not great. Also, no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> If you're wondering that no that's not possible but yeah i think it was a little bit of a stomach bug but also some anxiety and just not really keeping up with my wellness habits so i needed to rest yesterday so i rested i read got in bed early and i woke up this morning feeling so good and motivated and excited i did some journaling yesterday but i wanted to journal with you a little bit today and plan for the new year and maybe make a vision board and talk about goals and talk about all that good stuff but first i think i am ready for some caffeine now once i finish my celery juice i want to make a matcha i got some new matcha that i want to make and i'm not giving up coffee because i love my nespresso and i love my morning coffee <laughs> but i'm just going to be a little more intuitive each morning about whether i'm feeling anxious and if i am i'm gonna opt for matcha instead of coffee because i know caffeine more specifically the caffeine in coffee does not do me any favors when I'm feeling anxious or when I have a stomach bug, to be honest with you, it just makes it worse. <laughs> That was a very long-winded intro and welcome back, but I feel like I just had so many things that I wanted to tell you. I'm excited to be vlogging again and I'm looking forward to having a really nice day with you today. Spending the first day of 2023 with you guys. This is the matcha that I got from Peak Tea. It's called Sun Goddess Matcha. I'm very excited to try this. I've tried Peak Tea a bit years ago. It's vegan, organic, gluten-free, and really high-grade matcha. And I love that it's in these little individual packets so that you can take them on the go with you. And also, how cute is my new mug? I got a couple of new mugs from Clean Canteen. I'm actually working with them on Instagram. Just funny because I bought my mom one for Christmas and then they reached out and I was like, hey. <laughs> but I love this brand. I am trying to be better about single use when I can. Not always perfect, but I am trying to be better about that. And having these wonderful little to-go mugs and cups are super helpful with that. Plus I just love the color. Apparently, you can mix that peak tea with water or milk. I really want a matcha latte, so I'm gonna do it with my favorite barista blend oat milk. I think I'm just gonna add a couple of drops of this vanilla stevia. It's such a mission, I really don't want this to overflow. Let's do the taste test together. It smells delicious. Oh my gosh, yum, 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 yum. Also, I forgot to mention, I've been loving using my clean canteen cups. This is not an ad, by the way. <laughs> I just thought of this because it keeps my hot coffee or my hot matcha in this case warm for longer. I love those little glass mugs because they're so aesthetic and so cute, but I feel like my coffee gets cold really quickly and it's really annoying. Just nothing worse. So I've been loving using these because it just keeps everything warm for longer. If I want to go out for a walk and take my, like this morning, took my tea it was so nice. And yeah, these are definitely a vibe. I will link these below if I can. Let's get into some journaling. I thought this was cozier if we did it in my bedroom, although I have so many books and things scattered around me right now. <laughs> uh, okay, 
so first thing is first is I did make a dent in this book. It is so good. It took a turn last night. Too good to be true. I tried to start reading this at the beginning of December. As I said, Vlogmas literally took over my life <laughs> and I had no time to leisurely read. So I did not even start to read this book until I was in the Catskills. I am now probably, I think I'll probably finish it tonight because I'd like to do some reading today. It's really, really good. Even though today is the first, I'm still gonna count this as a book I read in 2022 because I'm gonna wrap it up today. I've gotten some questions about doing a roundup of the books that I read in 2022 and I would love to do that. I will try and do that at some point in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, I have linked all of the books I read last year on my Amazon storefront, which is linked below. It literally is under a list entitled books I read in 2022. So you can see them all there. Definitely want to read a little later today. That's on the agenda for today because I fell asleep last night reading, <laughs> but I wanted to do some journaling and I typically like to do this before the end of the year. But again, vlogmas took over my life. I had no time to reflect or be with myself, breathe, or think about anything else other than Vlogmas. So I'm doing it at the beginning of the year and I feel like that's okay. I know a lot of people, myself included, sometimes feel like if I don't do these things before the end of the year, I miss the mark or something. I'm really approaching this year in a more relaxed, calm, easeful way. More so than I have in the past. And I think that my move to New York has brought that about because I really wanted to live less rigidly and more in flow and in the moment. And I chose to kind of approach the end of the year as well as today in that same way. Typically in the past, on the last day of the year, I would have made sure that I worked out. I would have made sure I wrote down my goals. I would have done my vision board already, would have done all the things. I have to do it on the last day of the year. And as I said, I just didn't feel well yesterday. I kind of felt nauseous all day. I didn't feel energized. I didn't feel inspired to do it. I did do a little bit of journaling, which I'll go over with you in a moment, but then I hit a point where I was like, why am I forcing myself to do this today when I could do this tomorrow, when I feel more inspired to do it and it's coming from just like more aligned intentions versus feeling like it's something that I have to do. I did an end of year recap slash astrology insights for 2023 episode with my friend who's also an astrologer, Julian Elizabeth. And one thing that she said about 2023 that we could all keep in mind just as far as astrology goes and our energy goes is to aim to be more adaptable. And I've tried to be more adaptable and flexible in my approach. And I really want to keep that as I move forward. I've said this before about balance, but I think it's important to reiterate it again and say it for those who maybe didn't hear me say it previously, but balance isn't found, it's created. You have to create balance and balance is cultivated on an ongoing basis. You create balance by continually checking in with yourself and asking yourself, what do I need? You know, I do believe that there is such a thing as being too rigid. And then on the flip side, there's such a thing as being too lax, you know, and it's a matter of finding that happy medium for you because it's going to be different for everyone. And I'm really trying to continue my exploration of that in 2023. Even though I slept one full day in the Catskills, which was a day off, I was still vlogging, you know, and I was still thinking about work. I haven't really taken a break. I need a break. Yesterday was a little bit of a break, which was great, although I felt nauseous. So I felt like I didn't really get to take full advantage of my break. But with that being said, I'm kind of letting this week be my week where I feel into what I want the vibe to be for 2023. Rather than deciding it in 2022, I'm letting myself feel into it while I'm here. You know, we've arrived as of today. And now I can start to really feel into that this week and explore getting back into different wellness routines, trying new things that I maybe did previously, trying new things that I've never done before, creating a schedule, maybe deviating from that schedule and just really feeling into what feels good for me right now for this season. I definitely wanna come up with some overall goals that I want to have for the year so that I have some direction, but I'm also really in to the idea of taking my goals on in a seasonal way, if 
that makes sense. Rather than coming up with goals for the entire 12 months that lie ahead, it's like, what are my goals for winter? What are my goals for spring? What are my goals for summer? And kind of allowing myself to check in at each season and setting the vibe at that time rather than limiting myself by creating a game plan for the whole year when I'm gonna change. It's inevitable. And I hope <laughs> and I pray that I'll continue to evolve and grow and change. And so my goals and intentions and what feels good and what works is going to change too. The me now, I don't know, is qualified to decide what the me in six months is gonna need or want. I hope that makes sense. I am doing my goals and intentions for the year a little differently. I'm gonna focus on winter for right now and we'll see how this goes. I don't know, I've never done this before, but we are gonna try something new. That's what 2022 is all about for me and I think we should continue that trend, trying new things. So I mentioned yesterday that I did do some journaling. I cracked open my journal from last year that I started on the last day of 2021. And I journaled on some self-reflection questions, which I'm pretty sure I shared in the last vlog of 2021. I think I vlogged on New Year's Eve, I'm not sure. But I went ahead and read through what I wrote last year. And this was super helpful for me to remind myself of how far I've come, what I was hoping to achieve in 2022, what I did achieve. And I love these questions. I'm gonna share them with you now. I answered them again for myself yesterday, but my goals and intentions page, I left blank because I'm just not totally sure about that yet. And I kind of want to think on it a little bit more. So I'm going to share some self-reflection journal prompts with you. I answered them for myself last year and I answered the same ones for myself again yesterday last day of 2022. The first journal prompt is what worked this year? What did I achieve? What did I do well or accomplish? The next is what I'm most proud of. What didn't work? Biggest takeaways of 2022. Habits I'm leaving in 2022. I will no longer blank. So I'll read to you what I wrote last year. I will no longer play the victim in my life. No more waiting and wasting my precious time and energy. I will not stay where it hurts. I will not give my power away. I really feel like I did that. <laughs> Yeah, I love that one. The next is habits I'm taking into 2023. So what habits worked? You know, that's like we answered before what didn't work over the past 12 months, you know, what I'm leaving behind. And this prompt is about what worked and what you wanna take in with you and what you want to attract. The next prompt is how I wanna feel in 2023. And this is so, 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 so massively important, you guys. I'm a list and a goals girly, okay? I love to make lists. I love to tick things off my lists. I love goals. I love goal setting. I love to have a direction. I'm all about it. But there is something to be said about focusing on the feeling. I have a podcast episode about this. This is how I did my goal last year. This is how I manifested my move to New York City. This is how I manifested my apartment. It's all about the feeling. And I think when you focus on the feeling, you open yourself up to so many more possibilities and getting clear about how you want to feel can ultimately inspire your goals and intentions and desires. So write out how you want to feel. Some of the things that I wrote down for 2023 is vibrant, inspired, creative, in flow, loved, joyful, happy, grounded, at ease, generous, luxurious, flexible, nourished, rested, relaxed, open. So think about how you wanna feel. Maybe take some time and meditate on it. Maybe you go on a quiet walk and just be in silence and really ask yourself, how do I wanna feel? How do I wanna feel in my space? How do I wanna feel in my work? How do I wanna feel in my relationships? What energy do I wanna emanate? How do I wanna make other people feel when they come in contact with me? You know, it's ultimately about how you wanna feel, but what's the vibe that you wanna be giving off? You know, the last prompt in the self-reflection journal exercise is my vision for myself in 2023 is, and I didn't write mine yet. <laughs> I didn't write mine yet. I didn't write my goals out like I said yet because I really want to take some time right now and think about it. And I think it's something that I'll probably continue to work on this week while I reflect and contemplate and really feel into the fresh energy of this new year. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna do some journaling, thinking, meditating, and then we will catch up after.
was interesting. I feel fine. <laughs> but even though I'm not sharing my goals with you guys because I have to keep something for myself, I will say that one of my goals for 2023 is to dive back into my yoga practice and reestablish my relationship with yoga. Since moving to New York, I've definitely practiced less. I still have been practicing, just less. And I think that's because, I don't know, I wasn't feeling super fulfilled by my practice, but the last few days I've been feeling that energetic pull to get back on my mat. And I'm like, yes, that's my invitation to head back to my practice. And just thought that I would point that out, that it's totally normal to have ebbs and flows with your practices, with your hobbies, with your routines. This is life, it's normal. And I'm not gonna force myself to show up for something when it's really not serving me. I do in the beginning just to get a taste or a feel of whether I'm making excuses or if I really just need to take a break. And in this instance, I really felt like I need to take a little bit of a break and it's not feeling great to get on my mat all the time and I don't wanna force myself and so I didn't. But here we are, not too long after. <laughs> and I'm feeling inspired to get back on. So this is a good reminder that sometimes releasing the pressure does the trick over forcing yourself, you know? Flow over force is what I always say. On that note, I'm gonna go back upstairs, walk the dogs, maybe make a smoothie. I'm only feeling like a green smoothie. I haven't done that in a hot minute too. All right, smoothie time. I'm gonna do frozen pineapple, frozen banana, some raw coconut butter, fresh spinach, coconut water, aloe vera juice, and some vanilla plant-based protein, which I believe this is from Tropica. It's their lean vanilla protein. Chef's kiss, what an epic smoothie combo. I also added in some ice and it just gave it such a nice, light, fluffy texture. This is really hitting the spot. Very glad I did this. <laughs> vision for 2023 and I'm actually okay with that. As I said earlier, I think I'm going to not rush this process and just let it come to me. I do, however, want to update my digital vision board. I made one last year and I used to love to make paper vision boards and I still do, but I just don't have any magazines and I don't really feel like going out and buying a bunch of magazines. And last year I made a digital vision board and I really loved making a wallpaper on Canva and then I made it the background of my phone. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that again. It was really fun. I'll show you how to do it. I have another older YouTube video where I walk you through how I make my paper vision board. So if you wanna do it that way, go back and look on my channel. You can definitely find that. For a digital vision board, I'd like to use Pinterest, in Canva. I first will search for images on Pinterest based on the vibe. And I think that doing this is also going to help me really get clear about my vision for 2023. So yeah, but I will look for images on Pinterest. Also, like when I was manifesting my apartment, I went on the apartment buildings website and screenshotted some pictures of the apartment that I wanted to manifest, which was this exact apartment. <laughs> And I put that on my vision board. So if there's something specific that you're wanting to manifest, like a car, apartment, or a place that you want to visit, then just go and search that image and like add it to your board. Cause I think it's really powerful to have something specific to look at, but also maybe some of the images on your digital vision board are just the vibe you want to cultivate. Like on my last one, I had a lot of bathtubs, journals, and the vibe of like self care because I really wanted to focus on slowing down and taking care of myself. I also had 
hand holding and some wedding things thrown in there. Not necessarily because I wanted to get married, but because I wanted to focus on dating and partnership. I think there's a lot of different ways that you can create your vision board. And I don't think that there is a right or wrong way to do it. I think the most important thing when it comes to creating a vision board is that it should feel beautiful and exciting and inspiring to you. You should look at it and it should make you feel some type of way. Pay attention to the colors. Think about the vibe. Think about what you journaled earlier if you journaled with me about how you want to feel and find imagery that makes you feel those things or helps you feel those things and helps you envision the life that you want for yourself, the life that you want to cultivate for yourself in 2023. All right, once you have created your vision board on Pinterest, I just saved them all in a private board labeled 2023 vision board. I'm going to screenshot them and send them to my computer because I like to use Canva on my computer. And then I will upload them all into Canva. Once you have your images all uploaded to Canva, you're gonna go to create a design and I will usually do Instagram stories story size because I want to make a background for my iPhone. So we'll start with this, although this is actually slightly larger than that, but that's okay because we're going to make a collage and then you'll go over here to your uploads and there are all the images right here that I uploaded to Canva. And for my iPhone lock screen, I won't do all of the images that I pinned, but I'm just going to start to create a little collage. And so I first just get most of the images on the board and my vision board on Pinterest that I saved as a private board. That's something that I'll continue to add to throughout the year. Whenever I'm seeking inspiration, if I have a new idea of something that I want to do, I'll continuously add to that. And then again, for me, aesthetics are important because when I look at the board, I want to feel inspired. I want it to look beautiful. So once I kind of get all of the images on the board, I start to balance out the images based on the colors of them because I want the wallpaper that I'm going to create to look balanced and pretty. So like these are similar colors, this one and this one. So I'll probably do them on opposite sides of the board. You just kind of start to overlay your images. If you're not familiar with Canva, go on YouTube and YouTube a basic Canva tutorial. Really quite simple to use. I just use the position tool and I'll like put certain images in the very back to make them more like filler images. I'm just gonna kind of go through and get all of them up and then I'll start to move them around and create the collage. And I'll just kind of time-lapse this portion and show you once I'm done. Okay, so I have moved these around and made a board that I'm really happy with. I think it looks super balanced, it's colorful, it's cute. I might add to it later, but for now this will do. Kind of encompasses the general idea of my vision for 2023. As I said, I'm still kind of working that all out, so I'm not totally sure. But for the purposes of showing you, once I get the board where I want it to be, I'm gonna share, download as PNG, and then I will airdrop it to my phone. Once I have it on my phone, I'm going to use this wallpaper. And there you have it. I've created a vision board as the wallpaper on my phone. I'm actually really happy with how it came out and I feel like this feels really good to me for now. As I said, I might change it around later, but for right now, that feels pretty good. It's also 7.40 and I need to eat dinner. What am I doing? <laughs> Got lost in the vibe. And I also want to book my workouts for the week and I guess I'm just not gonna force coming up with my 2023 vision yet. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of feel into it. Maybe tomorrow it'll come to me. As I said earlier, I'm really just using this week to get clear. Oh, hello, are you ready for dinner too? <laughs> You're so cute, hello. Uh, hello, oh, here she comes. Here she comes everyone. Okay, should we feed you too? You ready for dinner? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's so hungry, she's gonna eat my fingers. You know, there's food out all day for you. <laughs> got 
so tired. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my dinner. I still wanna book a couple of workouts for myself for this week. And then I'm literally just gonna get in bed and hopefully finish my book to get to be true. So I'm gonna end this vlog here. But again, happy, happy new year. I'm wishing you all a healthy, amazing, abundant 2023. I'm so super grateful for each of you for hanging out with me. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new. I love ya, bye.